Hello and welcome to my lounge. I'm Sue and I live on my own. My a bit of my history is I, yeah, I was married for 13 years. I have two boys and they lived with me after my marriage broke up until they grew up and left home. And now I've actually been living on my own for over 20 years. I've had some difficult times and some very good times too. And I realised over lockdown that actually I'm quite content living on my own and I even enjoy it. So I thought I'm going to share some of the things that have worked for me. Now there's no one size fits all, we're all different, but maybe they might be a help to you too. Right, number one is looking after your home. If you live on your own, then you're going to be the one that's responsible for looking after it, whether you own it or whether you rent it. If anything goes wrong, you're going to be the one that's got to sort it out. And it's worth learning a few basic DIY skills. You can go on a course. Um, YouTube has got lots of very, very good videos that help, to help you to deal with all sorts of things. And Steve Hunter has just done a very useful life lounge on house maintenance, the things that you need to do all through the year. So I'd recommend you look at that. Now I had, um, I had a case recently when a door handle broke and I thought, oh no, I've got to get a man in. I can't do this. And then I thought, well, what would a man do? He'd unscrew it, he'd look, see what was wrong. He'd go and get another part, put it back in. And I thought, I can do that. And I did. And if you just take things step by step, so I unscrewed it, looked carefully, could see what was wrong. I Googled to find out what I needed, went to screw fix, got the part, put it back together again, screwed it in, and oh, it was so satisfying to be able to do it. Um, so it's, it's worth just learning how to do simple things on your own. Now there will be things when you need help. Uh, if you're moving heavy furniture, for instance, or if you're putting up shelves or anything a bit more ambitious, and you will need to ask somebody. Now, if you have friends who are skilled and able to help you, that's great. And I'm sure they won't mind being asked as long as you can make it a time that is suitable to them. Don't expect them to come immediately. Um, but there will be things where you do need to get professional help if you can afford it. And again, it's worth asking friends to recommend um, people that they've used who they know are trustworthy and do a good job um, to stop you being um, taken over by cowboys or whatever. Right, number two is have aims. It's really easy not to bother, isn't it? And I find it helpful to make lists. I have lists of things to do during the day. I have lists sometimes for every week. Um, but at the beginning of the year, I sit down and I write down my aims for the year. And my aims could be small things like getting a pair of walking boots. I did that one year and I've walked miles in them ever since and I'm really glad I got them. It can be bigger things like have a new kitchen. That was on my list for years before it actually happened, but now it has and I'm sitting in the result and I just love it. I'm so glad I did it can have health related aims. Uh, I've been trying to get to a target weight that's been on my list for years and over lockdown I've actually achieved it and that's so satisfying. Another health related aim could be to exercise uh, four or five times a week and that's not only good for your health but it's good for your mental health as well. So there's all sorts of things that you can do. And then at the end of the year I look back and I tick off the aims that I've achieved and I write a new list for the next year. And I find that it really motivates me to get things done. Number three is think outwards. I was thinking about this getting ready for church and it's daunting, isn't it? Walking into a meeting, any meeting on your own. So there's a couple of strategies I'd like to share with you that I use for this. First one is look around, notice people, notice if there's anybody who you think could do with you talking to them or sitting with them, because there's bound to be people that feel like you do, a bit alone. And the second one is volunteer, to do something to help. I've been organising 
uh, tea and coffee before and after the service now for some time and it can be stressful but it's really good to be occupied doing something with people and you're helping people as well which is great and it takes your mind off yourself and you know that it's really beneficial to people that you're there which is nice. I'll just tell you a little story about my cousin. Sadly his wife died and the first thing he did was go onto a website and a dating website to try and find another wife. Well you won't be surprised to know that didn't go down too well. Um, so we encouraged him to find something that he liked to do and volunteer for that. Now he liked boating and he volunteered for an organisation that takes disabled people on the river. And this is an excerpt of his Christmas letter. The summer was much taken up with doing boat trips for the disabled and has been hugely rewarding. The other members of the crew are a great bunch and we've had a lot of fun. Equally, many of our passengers face severe physical and mental challenges and it's really good to see their enjoyment. I think this is what I will miss most about leaving this area, so I'm delighted there seems to be something similar in the area that I'm going to. So I think that just about sums it up really. Right, number four is be real with yourself. Now, no one's happy all the time and you are going to have days where you feel lonely, you feel miserable and it's knowing how to cope with that. But don't deny it, it happens and yeah, learn to lament. And one thing I find really helpful is to write things down. After my husband left, um, I wrote reams, just getting feelings, thoughts out on paper. Um, I destroyed them all, didn't need to keep them, but it just helped me to process things and work through things. And even now, it's not just bad things, good things I write down as well, and every day I write my diary. At the end of the day, I just write a summary of what I've done. Um, it's very boring, so if anyone was to get hold of it, they'd probably be asleep within the first five minutes. Um, but it helps me just to unwind, unpack the day, and it's also really useful if I can't remember when I did things it can be very useful to refer to. Now for more profound thoughts, I have a journal and in this I write things that I feel are helpful for me to know, uh, things that I feel God said to me, things that I've read that I think are helpful and that is a very good resource as well to look back on and remind yourself of the things that you've learnt. And then I've already mentioned my review of the year where I do my aims. Well, I also keep a file and I write a couple of sheets of how my year has been, how I felt, what's happened, uh, just a summary. And again, that's really good to look back on and it, you, you can sort of feel yourself on a journey and it's nice to see your progress. So writing, I find, is a really good thing. Now, there could be times when you really need external help and don't be afraid to ask for help. I had some counselling after my husband left and it was a really good thing to do. So if life is just getting on top of you, please don't be afraid to ask for help. Number five, watch what you tell yourself. Bank holidays can be difficult, can't they? I tend to tell myself bank holidays are a time for being with family and friends, going out and having fun. And if you're on your own, you're really sad and miserable and you're missing out. One New Year's Day, I was feeling like that. I was on my own and I thought, oh, I'll go for a walk. I met a friend who was also out on her own, but the first thing she said was, oh, I had to get out. The family were driving me mad. So I think it just goes to show that there are good and bad in every situation and it's good to try and appreciate what is good about being on your own. Another one I had was to be happy is to be married. Now there are some very good things about being married. There are also some not so good things. Likewise, being on your own, there's some very good things and some not so very good things. And I think it's good to try and concentrate on the good things of your situation and not to think about what you're missing out on. 
Just watch what you're telling yourself and challenge it. Right, number six is maintain friendships. Now you may enjoy being on your own and it, it can be quite easy not to bother to keep in touch with people, but we do need friends. And I think a few good friends are better than lots and lots of acquaintances. Being on your own, you might find that you're the one who has to do the running quite often, that you have to ring people up. Don't just sit there and wait for them to ring you. And if you know that there are difficult times coming up, like a bank holiday or a birthday or some time when you don't want to be on your own, don't just wait and see what happens. Make a plan, arrange to see people beforehand and that will give you something to look forward to as well. Another good thing is to get to know your neighbours. Neighbours can be friends and that's good because you can look after each other's houses, you can share garden produce and you can do life together and that is a really important thing I think if you can get to know your neighbours it's really helpful. Number seven is have interests. Now going on from friends I don't know if this has ever happened to you but I think oh I'd like to talk to somebody so you phone a friend and they're out, no reply. So you think, never mind, I'll phone somebody else. So you phone them, they answer the phone. Hello, how are you? Oh, we're fine. Yeah, my husband and I, we're just sitting in the garden, enjoying a glass of wine, having a lovely evening. And you actually think, well, I won't disturb you then. So after a short chat, you ring off. And you end up feeling more miserable than you did before. And that's when I think having interest comes in. It's a good idea to have interests, things that you can do that don't actually involve anybody else. I've gotten into family history and that is so absorbing and it doesn't need anybody else to be there. In fact, you'll find that everybody else who isn't in your family is totally bored by your family history. But it's wonderful to get into that and find out more about your family. Or you might have all sorts of other interests for photography, gardening, sewing, whatever. Have something that really interests you. And the other good thing is to join groups so you don't have to do things just on your own. I was a member of the Countryside Restoration Trust for a while who were promoting wildlife friendly farming and I used to organise their wildlife monitoring. I learned so much about wildlife and I got to know some really lovely people so that was a really good thing to do. So whatever you're interested in, if you like walking, join a walking group, um, all sorts of things you can do. Uh, it really pays to have interests and do it either on your own or with a group. Number eight is take on challenges. It can be scary, but it's worth it. Might be little things, just like going to a meeting on your own. It could be bigger things. One for me was driving. I hated driving. I would only ever drive to the shops or to the doctors. Then when my husband left, I realised that if I didn't want to spend the rest of my life within 10 miles of home, I was going to have to get on and do it. So I did and gradually I increased my confidence and now I'm so glad that I can drive. Another less challenging one probably is using my trusty walking boots that I bought. Um, we walked the Stour Valley Way with some friends, 60 miles. Didn't do it all in one go, in fact it took us two years. But just the challenge of getting it done, organising it, getting to and from the various start and stop points, it was a challenge, but it was very enjoyable and I'm really glad that I've done that. And another one was going on holiday. Now I know that I wouldn't enjoy going to a hotel on my own but I do take up invitations from people to go and see them and I join group holidays with groups of people that I don't know. Usually before a holiday I really wish I wasn't going but when I come back I am so glad that I did. So it's really worth setting yourself challenges and, and doing them. Number nine is stay safe. I've just been talking about challenges but you do need to be sensible um, don't take on challenges that are actually dangerous. If you're doing DIY, don't do electrics unless you are a qualified electrician. Don't knock down the living room wall. If you're into running, don't run a marathon if you've got dodgy knees. 
if you like walking, make sure you take a phone with you. Don't run, don't walk anywhere that is um, dangerous. So just be sensible about the challenges that you take on. And then at home, it's good to keep safe as well, secure. Make sure you've got good door and window locks. The police will come and advise, I think, on security if you want them to. Um, but at the same time, don't make your house so secure that no one can get in if they're needed. If you need help, somebody needs to be able to open the door. So I leave keys with various neighbours and friends so I know someone can always get in. And also if I've locked myself out, I can get a key easily. Another thing is when I go into the loft, I take a phone with me in case I crick my back or fall down the ladder or something, I can summon help. And my mum always used to take a phone into the bathroom with her because she was always worried that she couldn't get out of the bath. So just be sensible about the things that you do and by all means take risks, but stay safe. And finally, remember that you're worth it. You are worth cooking for. You are worth cleaning the house for. It doesn't have to be just when people are coming round. You can do whatever you like. Do things you like. Give yourself treats. And also, you can bring joy to others. Use your house to entertain people. Give your time to help people. Give your love to people. Simon Garfunkel wrote the song, I am a rock, I am an island. Well, we're not an island. Don't cut yourself off. And finally, um, my faith has been a great help to me. In the Bible, God says, you are precious and honored in my sight. And that's so special. And God has been a great help to me. And I know that with him, I'm never alone. And I'm going to have to stop now before I get emotional. <laughs> <laughs>